Hey, so I'm here today to chat with you about how my fourth grade students completed these um, patterned landscape paintings. They've been working on them for about two-ish art classes, maybe a little bit more, which means two hours in my world. And I had started by introducing them to the artist Xavier Casti Castellanos, who did several landscape paintings of Mexico with lots of bright patterns and bright colors and shapes like that. So after a prezi about him, which I'll link to the blog, we dove right in. The whole point of this project was my students had to mix all of their colors. This one's still just a little bit damp, fresh off the drying rack. So that was the big key for this project, was learning how to mix your own colors. So let me show you what their paint tray looks like. It's not going to be pretty because the kids just finished painting. But here's how I set up my paint tray. I love these egg cartons with a double lid. Totally keeps the paint from drying out a little bit more. Um, I give them red yellow, blue, the primaries. I also give them magenta and turquoise because I think they make amazing other colors and white. You see brown thrown in the mix just because some kids were asking for that because they wanted it for things like trees. Um, so this is what our paint tray looks like. And for this project, everybody was given a nine by 12 sheet of paper, which mine is currently stuck under there. The girl and a old plate, styrofoam plate, and this became their palette. So the first thing they had to do was decide where the horizon line was going to be. So they could keep it as simple or as complicated as they wanted to, and I just demonstrated something very simple. I like to keep it simple so as not to overwhelm them, but they can get as intricate as they wanted to. Their next phase was then just to divide up the land for different kinds of fields that they might want. Keeping in mind you have to paint each one of these sections, so you not, might not want to make 3,000 of them. Then the next goal was to mix a sky color. I left it totally open to them, but we did have a big long chat about the color wheel, mixing colors, and how um, in my world for them, I have two rules for paint mixing. Always clean your brush in between, of course, because we don't want to ruin the paint tray. Secondly is if you're mixing color, don't mix more than two colors together. That does not include white. That was a good rule to start them out just because otherwise we mix all the colors together and end up with muddy colors. So just giving them that basic rule the first day helped. Then the following day we talked about how you could technically add more colors as long as they were analogous colors. Anything where it's a, um, a complementary color is going to muddy up your colors unless that's the look you're going for. So if you're painting your sky, um, you could do just I don't know, let's say you're going to do like a light blue sky. So I tell them to always get the lighter color first because you're probably going to need a lot of it. And for this, they use their paintbrush as their palette knife. And they just would um, twist the paintbrush to get the majority of the paint off of there. I told them to keep in mind you have to have a pretty good sized puddle. You got to fill that whole sky. I have a cup of water. I love these no spill cups. Um, because they are, live up to their name. They're totally awesome. And then there's that dirty old SpongeBob that they wipe their brushes on. So, cleaning off the brush. When you add your color, I tell them it's like you're making soup. If you were making soup and you thought, man, the soup needs some salt, you would not pour all of the salt into the soup. You would add a little bit at a time, taste it, decide what you're going to do next. It's kind of like paint mixing. Add a little bit of t at a time, look at it, and then if you think I really would like this darker, then you can go ahead and add more paint of the darker color because darker colors are so dominant they'll tend to take over. So once they had their color mixed up or a lot of them wanted to get fancy with sunrises or sunsets in which case they would mix up a couple of colors for their sky and then they would proceed to paint on their picture. So once they've got that mixed up and I'm going to have to do some blending they went ahead and started painting their sky. So I'm gonna do that and pause and get right back to you.